Want to start your career as a Linux system administrator? There are six areas that you need to know and be comfortable with. How to get started? I'll explain at the end of the video, but for now, here's my list. Spinning up a new Linux server happens pretty frequently. It's not always a production system. Some are used for development, some are used for testing, some are used for testing new software. This happens a lot because Linux is free and open source, so there's no licensing issues, it can run on minimal hardware. If a company is running a virtualized environment, that's even easier. Learn how Linux utilizes memory. Keep track of usage. Learn how Linux utilizes hard disks, including partitions and Logical Volume Manager, or LVM. You don't need to learn LVM commands just yet. Learn how partitions are mounted and what each partition is used for. You don't need to learn about mount options just yet. Are you seeing a pattern? I'll explain why you only need the basics. That's right, at the end of the video. You need to be able to navigate to different directories. You need to be able to move and copy files from one destination to another. You don't need to learn about symbolic links or how files interact with each other. You can skip over learning the directory structure and where files are located if you learn how to search the file system. The find and grep commands are two of the biggest. And SSH. SSH is a primary way to connect to a Linux server, so you have to learn how to connect. Learn read, write, and execute file and folder permissions. But there are separate permissions for the owner, group, and anyone else. Learn the numbers for each permission and the letter association. Learn the command to change permissions and group ownership and owner ownership. The package manager is what allows you to install or remove programs or services on a system. It's also used for security updates and system upgrades. This is all you need to learn at this point. If you can install a program, remove a program, and run updates, you can check this one off the list. sudo is a package that allows you to run commands as root, and the root user has the most permissions on a system. By default, you are a normal user that has limited permissions on the system. That means if you want to make system changes, you need elevated permissions, which sudo allows this to happen. You can think of running a command with sudo as the UAC prompt in Windows. Do you want to elevate permissions? Yep, sure do. Linux doesn't hold your hand though, so if you accidentally delete a system file, it's possible your system will not boot. And that's not recommended unless you want practice with area number one, installing Linux. So you still with me? Awesome. So only six areas. How is that possible? And how do you get started? Well, only six areas because once you start learning Linux, it just snowballs and you learn more and more. But notice I didn't mention certificates. How is that possible? Well, experience. Experience is the key with running a Linux system. So would a company hire you without certificates? In my opinion, yes. If you have experience, then yes. If you're running a home lab, if you're building out servers, if you're installing a web server, if you're experimenting with different programs, if you're running a Linux desktop, an IT department, if they get eyes on it, if you get past the HR filter, we'll definitely consider you. So home lab. A home lab is basically just you experimenting with software or operating systems or networking. So if you have an old laptop or computer lying around, install Linux on it. You can even install Linux in a virtual machine in Windows. And once you have Linux installed, learn those six areas that I mentioned. Here is where you start building your experience. Install the web server and configure it. Install a network monitoring tool. Install and use a video editing program if you are a content creator. Two birds with one stone. You're probably thinking this sounds like more than the basics that I was talking about. Yes and no. Hey, me from the future. I accidentally deleted a file. So I would start off with a desktop edition of Linux. Debian, Linux Mint, or Ubuntu. I'm not favoring Debian since those are all flavors of Debian, but the main thing we're looking for here is experience. So it's easier for you to just install one distribution and get started as soon as you can. So yes, you are going to need more than the six things that I mentioned, but you don't have to study them. You don't have to learn every argument for every command. 
Just learn the options enough to get something up and running and then move on to the next thing. So a resume with two certifications, say, but no experience, no projects, is most likely not going to win out over a resume that has projects and lots of Linux hands-on experience. Which again, as long as you bypass the HR filter. So again, a resume that has a home lab with a web server, a Pi-hole web filtering server, a network monitoring tool, uptime, downtime, that is going to show that you have the hands-on experience and that you have a passion for IT. So do all this in the desktop first. Then once you get everything up and running, then try it again, but in the shell. Now, is certifications worth it? Absolutely. If you have certifications and experience, you've got the golden ticket. Are certifications required, though? Absolutely not. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if I inspired you or if you just don't agree with me at all. I look forward to reading your thoughts. If you'd like to see my current home lab, click here. And that's all for this one. Go get that job.